Hey, Sarah here, Greatness Magnified. I cannot tell you how much love and support you have poured out to me um, sharing my bullying story. And I'm just so incredible, incredibly grateful. It's a really vulnerable thing, as I'm sure you can imagine, to release that and have a little bit of a a, a, a vulnerability hangover. I think Brene Brown talked about that when her podcast came out after I shared that. And um, your response, your support, uh, you choosing to share what you've been through, it reinforced it was the right thing to do. So here I am hanging out in my virtual studio and I thought, you know what? I want to read you something. Something that you may not realize is kind of hidden in our on our website. And it's really, it's our reason for being. And it has perhaps a lot more to do with bullying than you realize. So I thought I would read this to you, my friends, because it's from my heart to you. This is what we're all about. Because I want you to know our reason for being here, Greatness Magnified. Our thing, people. Our signature dish, recognition. Our critics, bullies. Our recipe, the great method. Our juiciest ingredient, thank you. I stumbled into the world of work. Like a siren song, the help wanted sign drew me through the doors of our local greasy spoon. The place where my friends and I blew our allowance on plates of steaming fries and gravy. I knew which tables were plastered with gum, which salt shaker tops the grade eights would take off and loosen, and how the Coke was more watered down to, than the seven up. That job was mine. My soon-to-be boss stared me down in his splattered cook's apron as I squeaked, I'm here for the job. Looking from my jelly shoes to my knobbling knees to my yet-to-be-covered acne face, he laughed sarcastically. <laughs> Come back when you're out of diapers, little girl. Um, for the official record, I was out of diapers, and to his credit, he probably hadn't actually had a day off since before the Food Network was born. But sliced with this knife of incivility, I slunk out with my head hung in defeat. Was my rosy cheek, left wing, soft-spoken, lovely hippie mama wrong when she said I could do anything? Was it everything up to but excluding a dishwasher? And I never did get a babysitter job. Babysitter, yes. Paper girl, absolutely. Cleaner to sales girl, busser to server, staff to middle manager, executive to entrepreneur, but never a dishwasher. Except in my own house, I do a lot of dishes. <laughs> Armed with a BA in psychology and a master's of family therapy and a whole host of postgraduate designations, I have insulated myself with certifications of worthiness. I have had something to prove. I have had to have the credentials so that I could have a cook-off with the critics anytime. But it is exhausting walking around the world believing that work is a messy place. Confusing ingredients, irritable cooks, anonymous critics, confounding recipes. Every organization I have ever worked in has had their Gordon Ramsay. Yelly, ill-tempered, quick to criticize bullies in an ever-changing set of expectations, all in the name of excellence or ego. The difference is in some organizations, they revere those bullies and in others, they deal with them. Do you give your most illustrious cook prime time or do you cancel their season? That decision impacts everyone from front of the house, back of the house, customers, suppliers, and reviewers. Here's the truth though. Here is the truth though. Your product is not worth selling if the service is atrocious. And you can't be bequeathed your industry standards of the Michelin star if all of your staff feel like your place is soul-sucking. And we here at Greatness Magnified do not believe in soul poisoning, I can tell you that much. If you don't believe me, check out your glass door scores, your sick time rates, turnover, and the latest super expensive engagement survey report. 
You know what the Gord Ramseys of the world, what they fear the most? Honesty. When you say things like this, there are maybe bullies around here, but I'm not going to be bullied. It's not cool. I have great ideas too, and I am going to share them. People are sick and stressed and overworked, and this is costing us money. No one wants to work here. And if this doesn't change, I am out too. In some or organizations, they call these the underdogs. And I'm a card carrying paid up service for life underdog. Because you know what? You can, you could treat us underdogs badly for only so long. You can't treat people like disposable. People aren't Chinette. They are Royal Dalton, limited edition, gold-plated, heirloom quality human beings. They only ever appreciate in value if you appreciate them. There's one thing I've learned from being a wannabe dishwasher to a senior leader. The one universal need that every single person needs is recognition, to be valued, to make a difference, to feel appreciated for their work, for their effort. Do you know what else I learned? It's often the missing ingredient. And if you miss the wrong ingredient, your cultural cake will not rise. My greatest mentors have taught me that the key to respect and weathering any organizational change, merger, corporate reshuffle or crisis is this. If you believe that people want to do well, they will work to prove you right. And sure enough, people like me have proven people right, even when their histories have had incivility as part of it. At Greatness Magnified, we're on a mission to change that stat from only about 30% of people at work are satisfied. The benefit of being the underdog is you're not afraid of a challenge. If you too want to make your organization the most rewarding place to work, we should talk. With any luck, we won't be the underdogs for much longer. And for the record, I would have best been the best damn dishwasher that that greasy spoon had ever seen. And come to think of it, the fries are rather soggy too. If you are ready to be the Michelin star of your organization, we should talk. And on a personal note, so that's our story. And I mean every word. I wrote it. I spent nine months writing that story. And I hope you can feel that it came from here. It came from a place of a personal, professional, corporate mission. And it also came from a place that I want to leave this life, this work with people better off. If you've ever been in my audience, you'll know that I often share a story about how our family had a, have one of our, one of the most important people in my life experienced an incredibly traumatic bullying episode. And if it wasn't for recognition being the true north of our family, I, I don't know where, where he, I would, don't know where we would have been at. So I will also tell you that this is a personal mission as a mom, as a friend, as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter, as your, your clients or my clients, my partners, my, my staff, my, my, my subcontractors, every, every person, every person that I have the privilege of sharing this earth with, I want you to know that you are so worthy. You have always been worthy, no matter what people have told you, no matter how they have made you believe about yourself, you are worthy. And if you want to create spaces of worthiness, belonging, togetherness, and of course, all with an undercurrent of recognition to build and unite and bond people in your culture, we should talk. We may be each other's people. 
Thank you for listening to our story. And thank you for everything that you are doing to make this world a better place.